Dear Lord, we pray that you'll guide us as we study our lesson today. Give us the heavenly wisdom. Most importantly, give us the good news of overcoming jealousy. It's a spirit that all of us are born with. We know that Jesus has an answer for us, for he overcame the temptation himself. We pray that you'll place your healing hand upon those who are wounded and, and sick. We pray for those who are grieving. And again, be a God of comfort to each one. We pray in the Savior's name. Amen. Well, I have a beautiful text I want to share with you out of the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 6. There is good news for us. The Lord Jesus has a remedy on how to overcome jealousy, and it's his agape love. Here in Solomon chapter 8 and verse 6, it says, set, a, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Well, there's a most celebrated case in all of the Bible about premeditated murder. And uh, it was the greatest premeditated murder of all the universe. And jealousy was the primary motivation for it. You read about it in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 14 where Lucifer wanted to be like the Most High, and that was motivated by his jealousy. I don't think we can really give a reason, can we, for Lucifer's rebellion. If we could give a reason for it, we would justify it, I suppose. But we do need to understand the implications of Lucifer's jealousy. First of all, in wanting to be like the Most High, Lucifer actually wanted to murder God. And he wanted to take the place of the ruler of the universe. And number two, Lucifer proved that he wanted to murder God because he crucified the Son of God. He crucified the Son of God, so his original jealousy became hatred, and hatred always turns into murder, in essence. So at least the seed of murder is in jealousy. Number three, God's character is love. And in the original, agape, a love that perfectly denies self. And that self-denial found ultimate expression at the cross, where Satan's hatred also found ultimate expression. There you find in the cross the, the confrontation between the ultimate of jealousy instigated by Lucifer and also the ultimate expression of love in Jesus, God's love. So we need to understand the dimensions of that event because the entire world is involved in this cosmic conflict and every one of us must take a side to stand ultimately with the mark of the beast or with the seal of God, no fence to sit on. The ultimate issue has to do with jealousy. The mark of the beast will be a desire to murder those who don't worship God on the right day. And that will be inspired by their jealousy, which will turn into hatred and then into murder. So we need to understand those issues so that we can rightly obtain the seal of God, which is his agape love, don't we? Do we choose today to deny self in Christ or do we choose to join in Lucifer's rebellion? Well, the Bible gives us uh, a number of different examples of the part that jealousy has played in determining the outcome of major events. But throughout the stories, there's kind of a common theme that jealousy never wins, but it's always overruled for good. There's a man in the Bible who could have uh, committed the unpardonable sin, but thank God he did not. Because if he had, he would have been, his committing it would have been a very spectacular one. 
for it would have reduplicated on earth the original sin of Lucifer in heaven. If he had committed this sin, it would have been jealousy against Christ. It was the sin of Lucifer against Christ, and it became for Satan the sin against the Holy Spirit. Well, the man who was tempted to commit the unpardonable sin of jealousy against Christ was, of course, who? John the Baptist. That's right. It was John the Baptist, wasn't it? Because John the Baptist was tempted with that. He knew the thrill of preaching the true message under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But then it seemed like the bottom fell out for him and the Holy Spirit left him for somebody else. And as he saw the crowds leaving him and going over to the man from Nazareth, he struggled with temptation. Think about that. Here's a pastor, his, the crowds that have been following him now suddenly leave him. That would be a factor of jealousy, wouldn't it? And heaven looked on with real concern how John the Baptist would respond to that temptation. It was a real test because he was the new Elijah. He was bringing the Elijah message to prepare the way for the first coming of the Savior. And even John's disciples taunted him. If you want to look at it, it's in John chapter 3 and verse 26. John had an inner core of disciples just like Jesus had disciples. And, you know, sometimes those that are the closest to you can hurt you the most with their words. And this is what they were saying to John. Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. Now these disciples are in this reference to the pronoun him, they're talking about Jesus, see? John, you baptized him. But now all those that were, were followers of you, they're going to him. You see the temptation for John? All right, well, John replied this way. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom. And the bride are his sheep or his people or his church. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, and that would be John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. See how he responded to that. That was a very humble man, wasn't it? He rejoiced that the crowds left him to follow Jesus. He rejoiced in that. John must have known something about the principles of the gospel of God's love and agape. You know, John has been rewarded in the Holy Scriptures with an honorable mention, hasn't he? And he suffered after that, and he actually languished in prison, and he died there all alone. But he remained faithful to the end. I want to meet John the Baptist someday, don't you? A man who triumphed over the original sin of Lucifer. And uh, he's going to be given his proper reward in the day to come. I think of another young man in the Old Testament who was tempted to jealousy. Uh, I'm referring to Joseph here. He was the next to the youngest of old Jacob's sons. Uh, the youngest would, would have been uh, Benjamin. But Joseph was probably 17 years old when his life was violently, violently disrupted. And so this is a great encouragement to teenagers and to young people that uh, they may overcome through the grace of God. You remember uh, his 10 older brothers who were the true church of that day? They were the Israel of God in the world, God's chosen nation to be. What did they do with Joseph? They rejected him, didn't they? They, they were jealous of him, they hated him. And there are some people today who feel rejected by the true church of today. Well, he was sent on a self-sacrificing mission to help his 10 older brothers. 
and Joseph suddenly found himself the object of their bitter feelings of jealousy. They grabbed him and they threw him helpless into a pit. He was lonely, he was hungry, he was probably bruised. And they were sitting down up, up there around a campfire, warming themselves and enjoying a good meal, possibly from home that Jacob had sent by them. Then his brothers most cruelly sold him as a slave to some heathen merchants who came by, thinking, of course, that bye-bye to Joseph. We'll never have to worry or see, about, see him again. You know, when you think about it, it was those brothers' hatred of righteousness by faith that motivated them to do this awful deed of jealousy toward their brother Joseph. Well, we do know the rest of the story, don't we, as it's told there in the book of Genesis. And that wasn't the end of Joseph's descent, but he proved faithful in looking to his God and overcoming all of the temptations that came his way. And Ellen G. White witnessed in the 1888 General Conference session the full force of the results of jealousy when she said that the Spirit of God was insulted. Ellen White wrote this uh, to Elder Uriah Smith, you cannot tell how it pains me to see some of our brethren taking a course that I know is not pleasing to God. They are full of jealousy and evil surmising and are ever ready to show in just what way they differ with elders A.T. Jones or E.J. Wagner. I can never forget the experience which we had in Minneapolis or the things that were then revealed to me in regard to the spirit that controlled men, the words spoken, the actions done, in obedience to the powers of evil. The words and actions of every one who took part in this work will stand registered against them until they make confession of their wrongdoing. Those who do not repent of their sin will, if circumstances permit, repeat the same actions. I know that at that